there guys, my name is Coach Chad Onstaborn, but built for theme park news, and welcome back to a future predictions, yay! So this video is all about my next five year predictions for Polton's part. Now I know it's a very, very late video, I do apologise, I was getting my final uni deadline out of the way, so now guys, I am all yours, I'm all yours, it, you, you belong to me and I belong to you, for at least until September or whenever we go back. Uh, now before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. Please share with your friends, your family and on social media and make sure you keep getting your questions in. We're getting so, so close to 1,600 subscribers. Can I just point out by the way, I think it was only like a couple of days ago, I was on like 1,540 something and we shot up to 1,560 which is unbelievable we breezed past you know the 1,550s category from 1,550 to 1,559 we breezed through that category so thank you guys so so much for that and let's get into this video so before like we said in past videos instead of looking at the next five years we first have to take a look back at the last decade so let's start off with 2010 at Polton's Park. Well, now if you don't know about this park, it's near Southampton. Uh, it's in Hampshire. It's near the New Forest. Uh, so it's right at the bottom of the country here. So it's a well away from me. So in 2010, of course, the big thing in 2010 was, of course, the planning application uh, for the Edge Ride. And, of course, Poultons were granted permission by the New Forest MPA to retain the Edge Ride in its current location on the 16th of March 2010. So there was no new rides in 2010. However, the growth started at the park in 2011 when Peppa Pig World was brought in. Seven brand new rides, three fantastically themed play parks, other themed items you could walk round and walk through through and you had an overall fantastic area for kids and families to enjoy your favorite Peppa Pig friends. Now in 2012 they went one step bigger. Now this was based upon and I think this new ride was a great increase in the park and it helps increase the park even more because don't forget in 2011 the visitor numbers increased from 500,000 per year to 1 million after the year of opening. In 2012 however they went one step further and invested in the thrill market by adding a 25 meter tall drop tower by SBF Visa called Magma. Themes surrounding a ride with an erupting volcano with smoke and lighting and noise and animatronic dinosaurs around the ride as well. And there's also a dinosaur garden opposite the ride as well. If you guys remember the Polton's Park Junior Reporters, which were introduced back in 2010 as well, can't forget that. Uh, but the Junior Reporters were a big factor as well and they actually did a report from Magma. One sister was stood in the dinosaur garden while the other two experienced the Magma ride before all three decided to go back on the ride. Now in 2013 the park opened their Show Street 4D cinema so a section of building that was just normal buildings uh, were transformed into this brand new Show Street area which was themed around this all like 1950s 1960s Show Street uh, a proper Hollywood press opening night was introduced for the new cinema and it was showing The Curse of Skull Rock which is a classic 4D cinema film here in the UK theme parks. In 2014 the park began demolishing its own entrance to make way for a brand new gateway building consisting of the big toy shop and Wildwood restaurant. New admissions and guest information kiosks were also built as well as that a new Victorian double-decker carousel as well as a new footpath was constructed along the main entrance. In 2015 the park began rebranding various areas of the park and we started with Critter Creek, which is the Stinger, it's around the Stinger and Wind in the Willows attractions. It was themed around the discovery of a number of whimsical animals and plants by Professor Stanley Blast. The Stinger was renamed Caterpillar to reflect its new half cat, half caterpillar theme. And Wind in the Willows dark ride walkthrough attraction was replaced by an animal walkthrough attraction called Beastie Burrows, a live insect and amphibian exhibit. So I thought when I saw numerous vlogs from the Wind in the Willows attraction, it did look quite dated it was quite cute but it was quite dated so i think that beastie borrowers need to come in there 
a new miniature train ride called Professor Blast's Expedition Express was also introduced, and a four acre area encompassing the rabbit ride, the astroglide, land of the dinosaurs and Kiddies play village were cleared for development on a 2016 area, a spring 2016 area. That was the Lost Kingdom, a dinosaur ride. And included in that, there was Temple Heights, which is a Zamperla magic carpet. We had Dino Chase, which is the re-theme of their um, little kiddie coaster uh, that was, of course, the Flying Frog. Uh, which was kind of like a, it was like a little mini, like lift hill with a little camelback opposite the station. So it was like a little miniature coaster. Uh, that was rebranded to Dino Chase. Uh, Boulder Dash, which is a demolition derby ride again by Zamperla. Uh, you had a tracked ride, the Dinosaur Keep Junior, and you also had the Little Explorers Playground. And we also had two Vacoma roller coasters: Velociraptor, which is a, Zam a Vacoma family boomerang coaster and he also had a family suspended coaster by Vacoma called Flight of the Pterosaur. A new discovery trail was also introduced on 17th of May 2016 to encourage native species from the new forest to reside. This includes interactive boards along the route and over 40 bird and bat boxes. In January 2017, Poulton's announced that Peppa Pig World would be bet bigger and better. And of course, these two new attractions were set to be opened for 2018. That was, of course, the brand new Queen's Flying Coach Ride and Grampy Rabbit Sailing Boat attraction. And as well as that, a brand new animal area called Little Africa opened next to Peppa Pig World. As well as that, the two little drop, drop towers, Jumping Bean and Jumping Jack, were removed from the park. And of course, in 2020, of course, now set to be 2021, we have Tornado Springs, which is the brand new um, desert town rebuilding after Storm Mac, uh, which was a very, very nice, um, you know, theme for the area. Of course, that's going to include a brand new uh, coaster, which is Storm Chaser. It's a Mac spinning coaster, a traditional spinning coaster, set to be a clone of Sierra Sidewinder at Knott's Berry Farm or a near clone and of course involved with that are other major attractions as well and of course like I've said before we all know now that this is now set to open for Easter 2021. So that my friends is the last 10 years of Poulton's Park. As you can probably tell those last 10 years were a real growth of the park. It was the park that we didn't really know much about by t before 2010 came along, before the new decade came along that started last decade, around 10 years ago now. And, you know, this part was quite unknown in the market. We had the big coaster, Cobra, which opened a few years before 2010 came along. Uh, and we had the Edge, which opened the year before. And, of course, you had to get that whole planning development uh, and this new planning application to keep it spot. Same with the Cobra. That ended up in 2009. That kept it spot. The Edge took a little while longer, and it was allowed to keep it spot in 2010. So that's why the Cobra planning application or replanning application wasn't mentioned along with Edge, uh, because that was finished in 2009, December 2009. Uh, and the edge was of course 2010 when it got the official replanning application approval to stay in its original spot. Now with those no new rides for 2010 we thought, oh here we go, Poulton's with the planning applications, we think that they could go downhill. However, they saw no new rides in 2010 as an opportunity uh, to not only keep the edge in its spot as well as the Cobra in 2009, but also start building up the park. And of course we knew about the stuff about Peppa Pig World, and just from that particular moment in 2011 when Peppa Pig World opened, the park continued to grow. So now, I'm here to show you guys that the growth does not stop in the last decade. Because we're going to be showing you guys my predictions for the next five years at Poulton's Park. So let's start with 2021. And as usual, it is an easy one. 2021 will be the reintroduction of Tornado Springs. We don't really need to talk much in detail about this one, but we know it's a fantastic looking new area. You know, I was I was really I was really looking forward to this. Scheduled to go to the media day. I was really excited for this. It's a shame it had to get cancelled. Uh, but hopefully, fingers crossed, they do another media day and another VIP opening uh, and other public openings. Uh, next year when it opens in Easter. Uh, it won't just be soft launch, they'll do a nice press opening once things have happened this 
year uh, back end of this year with the lockdown restrictions and them being lifted in the future uh, hopefully and uh, we'll just see what comes about with it really uh, we'll see how 2020 I think 2021 is going to be uh, for for the whole country is going to be like a rebuilding year from the 2020 virus so uh, I think 2021 is all about trying to rebuild as a country and leaving you know all the bad stuff in 2020 and just moving forward and looking up to the future so uh, I think Portland's Park are going to start that with this fantastic new area for 2021 so I think that's uh, going to be a good way to go for Poltons. Moving in then to 2022, and you can see I've circled the Magma and the Bouncer building. Now, Bouncer is like a little trampoline sort of area. Uh, no real theme to it, which I think, you know, it deserves to go in my opinion. But I've also circled Magma, and I'll get onto that in a little bit. It's not being removed, it's not being demolished, it's just, you know, I've circled it as a precaution. And I'm going to see a brand new family ride with a theme, because I'm going to go on about a future development in a little bit. But a new family ride, something like a Zamperla Endeavour would work very, very well. At Paltons Park. It's a next gen enterprise, it's a family thrill ride, it's not too big, it's perfect for the family thrill market, it's perfect for Paltons Park's market, and I'd like to see them invest in that particular ride type. Moving in then to 2023, and I think this is just going to be a simple relocation of a ride and also a brand new 4D cinema film. Now I'm going to talk about the 4D cinema film there, uh, so like I said, I'm thinking this is going to be a brand new um, 4D cinema film, a new one for the main season. Obviously, they do have the the Christmas stuff. I think the, I think the Christmas film's a fish story, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I do believe we'll see a brand new main season film as the big ticket attraction for 2023. It's not going to be a big year for Poland, in my opinion. Um, but the main thing for 2023 is the relocation of Magma, and I think that the Dino Chase and Little Explorers Playground are going to both be removed. I think because they've got the Water Kingdom play area uh, and the Muddy Puddles play water play area in Peppa Pig World, they've got two new play parks in Tornado Springs. I think that they've got way too many little play parks. And yes, it's a family park, but I think they can do without one. I think Little Explorers would be the one, in my opinion, because the two new ones in Tornado Springs, when they open in 2021, will be the new ones. So I think that Little Explorers may become a more deserted play park because the two new ones will be the big meal ticket for the kids. So I think that they can do without the Little Explorers one. And in that area where Dino Chase and Little Explorers is, build a brand new queue line, and relocate magma really because I think it fits in more there than it is closer to Cobra and that's why I said a Zamperla Endeavour in the old magma site and the bouncer site um, because I think that you know that's the way it goes in my opinion Moving in then to 2024, and not much to speak about with 2024 in my opinion, because I think this is just going to be a year of park improvements. Now this could be as simple as paint ups, TLC, um, general ride maintenance, essential maintenance, new theming items to fully indulge the audiences into different themed areas, but the main thing about 2024 is work for 2025, and 2025 is what we go with right now. And there are two potential types of code I think they could go with now you can see the circled site it's near where the bouncer site and the magma site which is where I think is going to be the brand new uh, family ride uh, like a Zampella Endeavour and that's why I said a specific theme with the Zampella Endeavour so maybe something uh, obviously with Tornado Springs you've got the Wild West you've got Critter Creek as the, like the beasties uh, Lost Kingdom is the dinosaurs you've got your Peppa Pig world uh, and you've got the other attractions which don't really have a theme you've got the Show Street 4D Cinema so I think a space theme would work very very well at Poltons. Now uh, obviously uh, I've just you know circled the coaster site it would replace the seal ride and the digger ride uh, two small attractions that again I think the park can do without. Um, the Cobra and Edge and the family ride the, uh, the predicted Zampella Endeavour I'm thinking will go to the park in 2022 would be space themed. Now the Cobra would be rethemed with a space theme, the Edge would be rethemed with a space theme, and you'd also have uh, the Sampella Endeavour themed to a space theme, uh, maybe the Dragon Roundabout ride next to the uh, Family Ride site for 2022 prediction. Uh, I think that's the Dragon Roundabout ride. I think that will be rethemed as well. Uh, and then of course next to all of that you've got this next major roller coaster. And like I said, I think there's two potential types to go with. A Mac Family launch, so you're looking at something like Mac Manta at SeaWorld San Diego and, a, and or a GCI wooden coaster uh, something like 
Invader, but I think that a GCI is a, is a bit far-fetched. I think something like Switchbat, which is a gravity group, uh, Dorney Park's investing in the gravity group in 2021, uh, something like Switchback at Z ZDT's amusement park in America, I think, that, I think Europe's first wooden launch shuttle coaster would be very sci-fi and would be very perfect for Polton's space prediction area. But I think the most likely out of the two would be a family Mac launch coaster, either an inverted, maybe not inverted because of course Flight of the Pterosaur is a suspended coaster, but something like Manta at SeaWorld San Diego, a family Mac launch coaster would work very very well at the park and of course you know with Storm Chaser They've already worked with Mac, so they could literally do that. Other types of coasts I'm thinking about, apart from a Mac and a GCI and a Gravity Group, I think they could go with something like another Vacoma. Uh, they could go with a Thrill Vacoma, like a Shockwave model, a Custom Shockwave model, or they could go with something... I, I, I'm struggling to think, really, because they could go with a Vacoma Bermuda Blitz, like a Let Coaster. That would work very, very well. Obviously, people spring to mind with an RMC Raptor. Uh, I think that's way above the thrill market for Poltons. I think the Cyclonators thrills could be the heaviest they'll go with the thrill market. So, I do believe that something a little bit low, which the RMC Raptor doesn't really fit in the bracket of. And, of course, it will potentially be out of Poltons Park's price range as well for a brand new coaster. Um... There was something I spotted on a forum like a couple of years ago that they were looking at our, that they were right I think some of the like the speculation that people from Poland were at Wildfire at Colmarden and you know riding it and stuff like that and there was loads of speculation like oh are they gonna purchase an RMC? I really don't think an RMC will come to the park. I think a Raptor and a Hybrid are too much out of their price range and their thrill market range. Uh, I think in terms of a thrill range, you're looking at something like a Gravity Group uh, wooden shuttle coaster or something like a Mac Family Launch. A GCI will work well for the park, but I think it'd have to be something quite compact and quite you know family related. So something like Invader at Busch Gardens Williamsburg would work. Uh, or you could go with that compact type thrill coaster. You look at Fury at Bobby John Land, uh, and you look at how that went down. Uh, that was a that was a good looking coaster. I'd love to do that at some point in the future. That looks a good coaster uh, with the quadruple launch, triple launch, quadruple launch, whatever kind of launch it is um, from Gerstler. Uh, so I think they, and of course they've already worked with Gerstler on Cobra, so they can, you know, work with Gerstler again if they need to retrack a few bits on Cobra, make it smoother to be part of a new space area with this other new coaster from Gerstler. So again, I think Gerstler or Mac are the two most likely manufacturers. I think Vacoma would be the third because they've already worked with them, but again, I think Gerstler and Mac would be likely as well. Uh, so I think it's, it's between Gerstler, Mac, and Vacoma for their next coaster, in my opinion. I don't think RMC is in the mix. B and M is definitely not in the mix. Intamin, there's an argument with that with the family coasters, but again, you know, price range, etc. Would they be willing to pay the price uh, for that coaster? Maybe they do, maybe they won't. I think Gerstler, Mac, and Vacoma are the three most likely types of manufacturers that Poltons will work with for their next major coaster. And like I said, it'll been four years since, you know, Tonnerna Springs opened, so I think that uh, a new coaster for 2025 would be realistic. If not, 2026. And if they were to invest in the coaster in 2026, 2027, instead of 2025, I think that 2025 could be a... Uh, another off year, maybe do some animal improvements, animal enclosure improvements. Maybe they could do a new themed area with some of the uh, attractions in the middle between the t other two themed areas, between Critter Creek and, you know, on the way to Papa Pig World and Tornado Springs and things like that. I know, I think it's like the Contiki and the, um, you know, the Victorian Double Decker Carousel, maybe sort of bring them into a themed area, so maybe give Contiki uh, a bit of a... Uh, a vintage theme and sort of create a Victorian street maybe got leaking up the two areas I don't know um, but I think that a 2025 coaster could be possible if not I think 2026 2027 uh, maybe they go with some ho maybe they go with a hotel I mean it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a bad idea I'd like to see a hotel sort of you know with a night like, like a, a village like a lodge cabin resort something nice to that respects the new forest as well so the new like the new forest lodge accommodation the lo the new lodge cabin resort or something like that um sort of behind the edge and you sort of get a nice second entrance into the park it'd be a nice way to expand the park and create a resort out of a park so i think this decade or the next decade after this so between 2020 at uh, 2031 
uh, no, 2030 and 2039, I think that decade could potentially be a decade as well as this one uh, for a hotel. So, uh, or some kind of lodge cabin resort, which would be nice, like a camping resort. Polton's Park Cla Ca Glamping, or Polton's Park Camping. That would be good. Uh, or Camp Camp Poltons. Camp Poltons. That would be fantastic. <laughs> I'm getting ideas just every single second. Uh, so thank you very much, guys, for watching my next five-year predictions of Poltons Park Resort. Like I said, these next five years are primarily focused on improving the park and sort of getting back up to speed after opening Tornado Springs. I'm sure the funds are going to keep popping in after Tornado Springs. They're going to keep investing, keep growing the park. And keep trying to win the UK's best park awards, which I think, and they are doing at the minute. They, they've won it in back to back years, so I think that you know this year and next year could be no different. Many parts like Alton Towers and Thorpe are stepping up the games, etc. But I think in terms of a theme park, I think Poulton's Park are really edging it in my opinion. So I think that Poulton's Park are going to keep their crown by investing in new thrills and for the family and for the teenagers as well. Thank you very much guys, my name is Coast Chow, please like, comment, subscribe, and for now guys, keep on the coast life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care guys, have an awesome day.